Right, good afternoon. Welcome to um, another live. Sorry for the confusing uh, start there, having to change uh, the link because uh, I just set it up wrong. This live stuff is, it takes a little getting used to. Right, we're talking Club Path today. Um, get in the chat, give me some questions you want answered on Club Path. I've got a few in the comments as well. So we will be. Um, you know, really trying to help you with how you should try and fix these ideas of controlling the direction your club is traveling on. Uh, it's a key fundamental. Well, I mean, it's such a key fundamental for playing this game and one that I think is often so misunderstood. So let's start with what is Club Path? Um, Dark here in Oz, Glenn saying in the chat, just going to dip into the chat actually quickly. First, good evening from Thailand. Mark Rogers. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Vlogs of a 13 handicap goal. Hello. Hi, Mark. What is your setup for live streams? Planet PE. Uh, I'll go into that. It changes daily because it's, um, it's a complicated thing to get the lives to look anywhere decent. Okay, so Club Path. Let's define what it is to kick us off. Club Path is the path the, path the club head is traveling on in three-dimensional space when it contacts the ball. So in that impact interval where loads happens, as close as launch monitors can get to different parts of that impact, they, they measure in different ways. If you take quad that I um, measure with, its point of touching the ball is when club path is attempted to be measured. So as soon as that club touches the ball, it's going to take the measurement from that point and tell you what direction that club is traveling on. So terms like zero path, which would be straight, uh, out to in, in to out are the terms that you will understand of what club path is. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How to control that, how to get an idea. A, well, A, to understand it and B, hopefully, to control it. So first things that we're going to talk about, if you want to control um, your club path, there's always clues, I think, in people's setup. So the way they set up to the ball um, gives you massive clues of what their club path might be doing. So, for instance, if I wanted to move my path more from in to out, I would do things like push my hips, pointing them a little bit more to the right, so aiming them right. Um, I would get my shoulders pointing maybe a little bit to the right as well. So more or less, depending on how far I wanted to move that path. So I'm going to use my setup to assist my club path. Lots of people do. There's also lots of people who have quirky setups um, where the setup actually it kind of it, it encourages the path that they're trying to stop. So starting with your setup, things like where you're pointing your shoulders, open or close those kind of ideas, or somewhere parallel to your target line or start line, are really going to give you some hints of how you can move your path around. Next things I will look at in students as well is things like ball position, so where the club is um, on the ground in relationship to their feet. So in this one, you can see the ball position if my driver is further forward than my iron. Now, to give you an idea of how this will affect path, um, I've got my trusty hula hoop here. So if I'm hitting the ball on an upward part of my strike, ball position forward, so catching it on the way upward part of my swing direction, um, that generally will tend to point more left of where the lowest point of this arc is. So for instance, if I push this pencil forward on this circle, you can see how it starts pointing left. So this being straight, that makes my club path tend to go more to the left driver as I push it more forwards. And then iron, if I start hitting them on the way down of this arc, so I start getting it on the downward part, you can see the pencil, even though I'm not really changing the swing direction, is now starting to point to the right, this being straight. So hitting the ball on the way up requires a very different looking swing direction to get that pencil to zero to if you're hitting on the way down. Now this is the first port of call where people get confused. When you look on video, you're generally looking at swing direction. So you're, swing, you're looking at the general direction that hoop is pointing on. Without knowing the down or the up, you're not actually going to always know what that path is. Now, experienced coaches can see other patterns. I often feel I can see patterns in strikes to see if the path is going X, Y, or Z. 
but I see lots of amateurs, certainly when I used to use cameras a lot, so when I use cameras and launch monitors a lot, saying, oh, look, that looks really into out or out to in, and I would show them the numbers, and it would see very, very different. So ball position and setup is a great place for you to really try and work out what's going to happen with your path. So generally, the more further back you go with your ball position, the more you'll push it out to the right, the path, so more into out, subject to your baseline starting figures, and the more you push it left, so forward in your stance, the more that path will tend to go left. Classic slicer um, kind of mistake is they would always get the ball, not always, but a classic mistake they make is they put the ball, say, much further forward than where I've got it here because they're trying to move path further left because they know their face is going to be open to the path. They know it's going to slice to the right. So they're trying to start the ball up the left and they're using ball position to do that. Again, that's where some of the quirks in setup can not help a player. So playing with ball position back and forward is a great way of trying to move your uh, club pathways around. But remember, it's three-dimensional. So the more you move it back and forwards, then you're going to be starting playing with how you're hitting on the way down or the way up, which also can have effects if you're hitting an iron and a wood. So there's more things you often have to do. Now, the next point that we need to think about um, is I want you, this This is the key one I see loads of people really, really slip up on. So club path, the direction the club is traveling on, is not plain. It's not the same. So your ideas of plain, so where that club looks like it's swinging around your body. So if it's behind you, in front of you, those kind of ideas. Again, if I'm going to use the hula hoop, thanks Orla for use of your hula hoop. If path of my pencil here is zero... I can have a very, what you would call, flat plane. And you can see that pencil is staying at zero. And then in turn, I could have a very upright plane. And that path is staying at zero. Path and what you'll hear coaches say is plane. I don't like that term. I know lots of coaches who don't like that term. Um, get bunged into one together when people look at their swings on video. Swing direction. So twisting the hoop around is very different to if you swing very upright or if you swing what people would call very flat. That doesn't have to, for, for lots of people, does not change club path at all. So what I see happening is people playing with how around their body they swing to how upright they swing to try and influence path. They get frustrated because it doesn't, because all they're actually doing is really influencing lie. So a flat round your body swing can still swing straight but you'll get toe up in the air a little bit more and then a more upright swing you might start delivering toe down kind of shots but still swinging the same stock path that you're struggling with that when i was teaching full full time that was the constant constant battle that i would have with students a trying to get them to understand that b trying to get them to separate the two movements be able to change their plane so how the club lies on the ground as they strike the ball, then in turn their path as separate things. That's such a skill that you could all try and practice at home. Let me know in the comments if that makes sense. That concept is just very confusing for some people. Like It really struggles to compute. Let me know in the comments um, if any of that makes sense. Um, how does playing affect ball flight law, Scott? Um, it depends how your clubs are set up because lots of people get custom fits set around that hoop being upright or flat. Um, so then it can be, you know, kind of worked out of them, if you like. Alex Edmonds. Hi, Mark. Hello, Alex. Uh, the comments are always behind. Let's see if people are getting that. If you do, post in those comments. How does playing affect ball flight law? I've just answered that, Scott. Hopefully you'll get that. I know it's slightly delayed. We'll come back to that. Okay, now the biggest way to control club path for nine times out of 10 students, and there's always quirkies when you when you coach a lot, you'll realize that you've got to really, um, you know, treat each individual as there is, but you always start with your bigger patterns. Um, is um, how the face relates to the path. That's the biggest thing that changes club path for most students. Now, I'm just gonna go back into the comments because they're, they're um, catching up. Great content, Brock, yes, boom, got it. Um, Phil Arsenal 2018 says, yep, that made sense. The hula hoop helped Jack. Thanks, Jack. So, yeah, that's the confusing one people get on the old. Um, we'll come back to this slide in a second. That's the confusing one that I get 
when I talked about this online with people, um, you know, so on social platforms, and also like, because you see it in lessons, people looking at an image, got to the stage where I don't use that much video in lessons anymore. It's predominantly launch data and their feels and how that relates to the launch data. Uh, makes sense. Just wondering how to improve distance. Uh, might, well, maybe we'll do another live on that. I had a lot of lessons. Still standing my club shaft up. Want to hit the club ball move. So practicing. Oh, it's fine. Does my head in. Yes, yeah, so standing. Philip saying struggling with standing the club up. So that's uh, maybe delivering toe end down. That's such a common fault. And again, that leads back to my point. For years, people have been practicing swing direction and thinking that's changing path without having any concept of lie because lie how you lie the club as you hit it hasn't been taught in golf lessons really since launch monitors came along and started measuring it um so not being able to separate the plane that people want to call it you swing the direction of the club on with path is the biggest lacking skill I see in students and where good players, once you explain it to them, they can separate the two and control them separately. That's the biggest actual skill. Unfortunately, it's not a simple statement. Unfortunately, it's not one of those simple, perfect your backswing videos that everyone wants to do on YouTube because uh, those kind of simplized ideas, unfortunately, don't really help. You have to go down the rabbit hole a little bit to understand, because uh, it's 3D, people don't think in 3D. Right, let's go back to that slide. We've got some questions as well to get through today also. Um, hope everyone's staying safe and doing what their government's telling them. We're locked down in the UK, so there'll be plenty more lives if you want to keep up with the lives. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you like them. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. If you're not subscribed already, give it a little subscribe. Um, it certainly does no harm. And lets me know that you want to see more of these fun interactive lives. So um, the face or the loft orientation to the path as you see in this um image here has the biggest effect on changing your club path because if i show you the next image where the face is approximately the same closed amount to the path you can see to get this shot anywhere near functional look at the direction of that hoop where it has to twist if you have students who have a severe face orientation to a path. Let me bring that other slide just back to give you the compare. You can see it's nowhere near as far to the right as it is, it is with that second one. Um, what happens is their path always tries to align, generally always, to make them functional. So what I mean by that is if you've got someone who hits generally with a face, say, 10 degrees open to a path, Okay, so lots of numbers here. I've got my little got a raid is all I've raided all as bedroom here for all our stuff. So I've got a ball, I've got a face that is 10 degrees open to a path. Uh, let's get this in shot here. Here we go. So the face is pointing to the right at a straight direction of the path of the club. If this person swings on a zero path or even attempts to swing into out, which I've seen do in, in lessons, they hit the ball over to the right and then slice into the right they can't play golf like that so what these people generally do is they will move their path 10 15 20 degrees to the left they have to face open to the path to get some kind of functional slice and it's these kind of people who say i just can't stop slicing my club i slice everything how do i stop i've tried and what they when you measure them they've tried lowering their plane so that hoop comes down obviously we know that doesn't change path particularly so that's not helped that's frustrating for them they've tried swinging out to the right but obviously they just get worse because if the face is 10 open to the right and they were able to actually get a good club path or what they think is a good club path to zero they hit the ball off the range or off the planet and i remember saying that with students constantly again when i was teaching full time and you get your kind of repeat uh, uh, out to in out to in out to in kind of students um, is that they actually don't, I used to say to them, you don't have the right to swing the club on the correct path that you want to because your face isn't allowing it. So again, of that slide there, if the face deviates, remember this is a closed one in this picture, most people's faces are open to the path. Um, they've got to swing to the left. They've got to get their paths out to in. They've got no right to swing from in to out. 
because they would hit worse shots. So the absolute crucial way for most people to control path is actually to go to their face, get control of the face. And this is why in so many videos and you'll hear people like me and Matt and many other pros talking about wrist angles. Wrist angles directly control the loft of the club. Uh, if I can get it in shot. The face orientation, which then in turn will severely dictate the path you have to swing on to make your shot work to make it functional um, so if you want to actually change path for 99.9% .9 of golfers for me it's actually not even changing path the amount of paths that I change by not even talking about club path if I could film every lesson honestly it would blow your mind like I've got people I've had students no word of a lie um, who would say I've hit out to win sliced all my life and you literally spend five, 10 minutes with them getting it in drawers. And they're like, wow, how do you do that? Well, I didn't tell you to lower the hoop because that does nothing. I didn't tell you to swing to the right because if you did, you did it literally on the road. What I did is I changed the orientation of your face. So we worked on their wrist angles or whatever tricks there are to change the orientation of the face in a grip, those kind of ideas. And their path just changes. It changes itself because they get bored of hooking them into the left net and they naturally then just start swinging that path more out to the right to compensate for the new face orientation by moving their wrist angles. So for most of you, if you can get control of them, I promise you, your paths would completely change all day long. Coach is in the chat. Hello, coach. No way, coach. Looking sharp. Coach has shaved his head. Go on his Instagram. You can see... He's gone for the crossfield shave look, looking good. We might have to do a live just to get the um, ins and outs of what's happened with his hair because it's definitely a big talking point. Right, should we do a couple of your questions? Um, Duncan says, is there a way at all without a launch monitor to measure path? Don't need a number. Uh, don't need a number. I Just an idea of whether it's left or right, really. Uh, good question. And a tricky one. I used to get this loads when students used to come for lessons with launch monitors. Um, your basic rules, there's exact sciences, and it changes between iron and driver, believe it or not. But without going too far down the rabbit hole, so it gets all really confusing. Um, your your ball is going to start on about 80% direction. So the start direction of your ball will be dictated by where the face points. So if I point my face at the camera and I strike it, it's going to start 80% towards that camera. And then it'll curve away from the direction the club's traveling on. So let's say face at zero, path five left. This ball's going to curve away from the left to the right. So it'll start straight-ish and then bend off to the right, subject to lofts and all those kind of things. That's a wedge, so there'll be different things at play there. But that's your basic premise that you want to work off. So if you are getting the ball starting right and it's curving back to the left, that means your face is closed to your path and there's a good chance your path, subject to strike, is off to the right. So it's in to out. So we're working on the 80-20 premise and then looking at the shapes of your shots can really help you understand if you are moving path around. Because when you get on the golf course, I used to say to students, it's all great measuring and showing you these numbers and you controlling them where you hit a shot and we look at the numbers straight away. The actual skill is getting you to do them on your own and repeatedly. Because I used to say to students all the time, if I show you enough of this and I bark at you enough and show you how it relates to how you move, how you swing, those kind of things, I can get most students, to be honest, I'm quite persuasive to do anything. Can you do it in your own trousers? Can you do it with the wind off the left? Can you do it with the wind off the right? So your 80-20 premise and then going out there and trying to move it really is, again, one of your biggest biggest skills that you can go and practice and then maybe going in for a check-in you know once a month with your um, coach or a coach with a launch monitor to check that your feelings are actually coming out as measured um, I had a blast yesterday hard not to when you're shot when you shoot an 18 Nick I'm not sure is that playing on a computer game is Eagle my face gonna make it back on the channel at coach Alex um, It'd be great to get James back on the channel. He's actually not in golf anymore, so um, he would have to come out of retirement, but uh, hopefully we can. Right, next question. Um, tips to help stop coming over the top. The harder I try to hit the ball, the worse it gets. So the over-the-top action, again, that's not a term I like, but we can maybe do that in another live. So basically their club path is going to the left. 
basically everyone I teach who has this issue, again within rules, if their setups and their grips are somewhere near where I want them to be to make them functional, so they're not too brutal with anything they're doing in their hands and their shoulders, changing that face orientation, changing the way it moves around their body using their wrist angles, using a little bit of arm turn as well, um, absolutely fixes any of these ideas of over the top. Again, the over the top, as you want to call it, or the out to in path, or the standing up of the shaft, whatever you want to call it, it's there to make you hit target. You're using it to function because your face is open to your path. Remember, that's a key phrase for you to remember. I set students all the time. You don't have the right to swing at zero or into out because your face is open to a path. You just It would make you worse to achieve what you think you want to achieve, which is why I would reverse engineer it if you like, and always go the other way round. Um, hopefully that helps. Other key points to remember before we finish in some chats. Strike's going to, you've got to work from strike out because strike can make all these numbers kind of irrelevant. You can hit out to in and get different shapes, subject to where you hit the ball and face different start directions. So I used to say, and I still do, when Fanula hits balls, or I talk to my parents who might hit different parts of the face, if you miss hit it, kind of, you don't monitor that one as much. That's just, you're gonna get randomized patterns when you're miss hitting, subject if you miss hitting all in the same place or not, most people kind of dot a little bit. Well, lots of people do, uh, certainly um, people who are really trying to learn new skills. Um, it's when you hit a good one, when you strike one, which is somewhere that feels good on the face and it doesn't curve the way you want it to. They're the ones you've got to take note of that 80-20 rule with the 80% face, 20% club path. They're the ones you've really got to register and try and beat. Again, that was a, a big thing I would see with students. It was so instinctive to hit a shot, look at it and re react without looking at the strike or working the strike in. And what that does is give them false data because they hit it out the neck of the club, say with a driver, so at the heel, ball starts left, curves to the right. They say, oh, I must have had open face to the path and cut across that one. You look at the numbers and they're quite neutral, zero, zero. So it's like, no, don't change your swing now. Do that swing again. If we can get a strike in the middle or slightly towards the toe, you'll see it start right and curve back. Working strike in, working this into everything we're saying is always how you're going to improve. The amount of students I see who um, literally don't work strike in and are just working off false strike data into their shapes of shots really harms them. So last key points then for me, the best, best things for you guys and girls to do if you want to get out there and start controlling your um, club path. The biggest thing that for me, for every student that changes it, that absolutely influences how they control that club path is where that face points in relationship to it. So in your two weeks of locked indoors, in your time of being locked at home, the more you can play with that club in your hand, wedge anything, because you can chip shots with it as well. So practice chipping shots with a face 20 degrees closed at the beginning, so pointing left and see if you swing straight where the ball goes, see if you swing what feels like very into out to you where the ball starts, and then if you swing out to in where it starts, and then play with 20 degrees, 15 degrees, five degrees. So to give you an idea, when I work with very good players, we're controlling the face within a degree and half a degree. When I'm working with your average 20 yard slicer, you know, still it's target, but you're talking like five to 10 degrees. Generalized rule for better players, if you can get them under four degrees, under four degrees of path, under four degrees of face, they generally have some control. So when you're in these off times, get that club in your hand, do some practice swings, get it going over your shoulder where you can't see it, feel what feels like to take loft off. So turn that face of the sky, turn it down to the ground, make some swings that way. Because another common fault that I see people do, I'm just going to move away from the mic slightly here. Hopefully you will, I will stay in shot. Um, if I go this way, sorry, this way, um, they can control it as they go back, but as soon as they start down putting force through that club, they start putting these wrist angles back in. So it's about making sure you take them out on the way back and you keep them out on the way down as well. So it's making sure that you do try and control those wrist angles both ways. If you can control face orientation, you absolutely will start to control path to order. So a good player will use those wrist angles to hit round the tree left to right, hit round the tree right to left, 
Um, and everything is built around how they know that face is going to be delivered to whatever path they send out at that ball. Um, David, any tips on how to practice this on the range? Good question, David, in the comments coming through. Um, start direction, really studying start direction on strike, putting things in front of you. So putting, um, literally putting like a basket in front of you and trying to start that ball to the right and curve it back. That's going to change your facial orientation when you um, start that ball right at the basket. And obviously your pass is going to have to be further right to get that ball coming back. So start directions, things in front of you is a great way of practicing it on the range. Should I flatten the lie of my nine iron and wedge? I tend to hook them, but hit everything else relatively straight. Some dude, yes. Definitely think about your wedges. Wedges generally come out a little too upright for people. So maybe go and get that measured, get it flattened, and um, see if um, you have a better... I know Matt does it. I do it a bit in my wedges as well. I think I'm one degree flatter. He goes two degrees flatter in his wedges because it's the same problem. And that's that loft on the club. So yeah, absolutely something you need to test, really. How does pressure in your feet affect club path? Jonathan, well, again, Jonathan, so it, it's face the path. That's everything. Getting the pressure in your feet is changed is a secondary process, if you like, because if your face is open to the path, you could have the best pressure in the ground ever. It'll change path, but you'll become less functional, so you won't sustain it. Again, if your face is always open to the path, because your wrist angles don't work, you change the pressure in the ground and you get your path moving more right to left, it's just going to start right and curve right. So you're going to stop doing that very quickly. Um, now, remember, there are some people who do react to path as well. So you get them swinging to the right and their face orientation does change. But they are much less. I would always start the other way around with students as a general rule. Um, hi, Mark. My coat says low and round. I'm in, I think he's meant to say in backswing. Yeah, that has its preference. But again, remember, if path is the red pen here, I can be low and round and this and I can be completely upright. And basically, this is not changing the path at all. You've got up and down in there. That's basically the lie of the club's gonna change dramatically, not swing direction, and then in turn path. So careful with that one, but go with what your coach is saying. If it makes the changes, keep doing them. Obviously, I have not in that conversation to know exactly what was said. Hand and club head relation. Uh, hand and club head relation, Dom. Well, basically, grips do have a big effect on how much you have to use your wrists in certain ways. So you'll see people say with strong grips, as a general, don't always have to have their wrist as flat at the top. This is something I see on telly quite a lot, which is quite frustrating. They control, they're comparing wrist angles with lead arm at the top from two players who have very different grips. So if I started with a weak grip, so seeing no knuckles on my left hand, top of my backswing I'm going to have to bow to get where I am with a more neutral grip so you can't control you can't compare like for like like that unfortunately it's got to be relative to what they start with as well so yeah hand grip orientation will affect how much visible twist or not that player might need to try and control face and there's other things controlling face as well you've got your arms obviously going this way as well as certainly body turns and all those kind of things does shallow plane make path harder Sean, I can't, I don't really know what you mean by that question. Uh, if you, I did, I would answer it. What's going on with my path to make me shank? Great question. We can finish on this one. I love this one. I used to love getting people who shanked for golf lessons because they used to just get it so wrong. It was so interesting. So, two main things really with shanks. You can have extreme paths. So if you are, there's a straight line where we're trying to hit the ball. If you're massively into out or vice versa, out to in, sometimes that can cause shanks. Because if you think about it, you've got kind of every part of that club having a little look at that ball as it comes past. So your kind of room for impact could be slightly short, uh, kind of shortened in time if you were much straighter on down at the bottom. That's one point. But the main point that I used to see strikers doing and this one used to baffle them. And they've had lessons for years on it. And it was hard sometimes to make people believe that it was this simple. But it is. Is that I see a lot of students. So if you've got to remember, a launch monitor is monitoring, measuring the direction of the club as it strikes the ball. 
So I can have a zero path and strike the ball right at the tip of the toe and it just shoots off of here, zero path. And I can have a zero path and hit it right out the neck, but the club can still be traveling straight to where that launch monitor is aimed up because zero path can be through the middle of the ball, through the heel of the ball, or through the toe of the ball. So think about that. The lines here are the three different paths. They're all exactly the same. Let's call them zero, subject to my poor um, um, drawing. But I can hit it off the toe, I can hit it out of the middle, I can hit it out of the heel. And that's one last point. The reason I want to finish on that point is because it is for people who shank the ball and often people who are trying to change path. As simple as that. The amount of paths I've changed with students by asking them to hit it slightly more out the toe than the heel. Now, I've seen up to four degrees difference in path from people who are serial neck strikers trying to get them to feel hitting out at the toe. So they're like three out to win, three out to win, three out to win all the time when they're hitting out the heel. A little fade, but they want to be able to hit a draw to play a certain hole or they feel like they can hit it further if they hit a certain shape. Um, you ask them just to try and get it slightly out the toe. So I mean, literally, we are aligning everything they do a few millimeters this side it's a tiny little adjustment they're not really doing much apart from trying to return that club slightly their side of the ball you get them um, a few millimeters out of toe we see a nice functional draw and you see the path go to zero and one in two outs those kind of ideas and that's simply by moving their strike um great question that love that question really good Thanks all. I hope that helps. You got any more questions? You want to see more lives? Post in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button as well. Um, so you let me know that you like the lives and you want to see more of them. We're stuck together. We might as well try and learn as much as we can. And hopefully this way of answering your questions does help that. Um, also remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not. Got some amazing videos coming in this locked up time. Uh, I've had a lucky enough uh, Strixen have set up some time with this dude. So we've got some indoor challenges that me and Shane are going to challenge you to, um, as well as him showing off his silverware. It's a fantastic uh, little interview that we did the other day. So that is coming shortly. Um, so make sure you're subscribed, stay in tune, hitting that thumbs up button if you want to see more likes. So I can see how many of you are in the room and I can see how many likes we've got. Come on, hit that thumbs up, people. Let me know you want more of these. It's there. I want to see it. Yeah, there it is. And another one. Go on, hit it. Bang, and again, and another. That's it. That's it. And then I can also see that some of you aren't subscribed. So just down there, hit that subscribe button. Come on, we can all learn together. You just keep... We're all stuck indoors. Get down there and hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Um, stay safe, stay indoors, or whatever your government is telling you your guidelines are, everybody. And we'll be out playing golf soon. As always, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for hitting that thumbs up button. And thanks for subscribing. Also, speak to you all soon. Have a great afternoon.